two blocks connected by a light string 2. Consider the blocks in figure as they move 75 centimeters. Remember, this was a problem we solved before. Find the total work done on each one, part A, if there is no friction between the table and the 20 newton block, and part B, if the coefficient of static friction mu sub s is 0 0.5, and coefficient of kinetic friction mu sub k is 0 0.325 between the table and the 20 newton block so in part a we will consider no friction case so let's start with drawing a free body diagram for the 20 newton block so we, we're going to identify the forces on this block and uh, with no friction here, we, we have the weight of the block, the normal force from the table, and the tension on the string, pulling it to the right. So, uh, modeling this block as a particle here, uh, we have the weight pointing down, which is 20 newtons. We have the normal force balancing the weight, normal force from the table, and the tension pointing to the right and uh, this is our y-axis this is our x-axis the net force on the y-axis should be zero there is no motion on the y-axis the normal force is equal to 20.0 newtons the net force on the x-axis must be equal to mass of this block times the acceleration which is uh, provided by the tension T. So we can see that the tension T is, uh, the mass is 20 divided by G, mg is the weight, so 20 divided by 9.8 times the acceleration. So we can also see that acceleration is 9.8 T divided by 20. Now let's work on the free body diagram of the 12 newton block. The one that is going to come down. Now the forces acting on this block, we have the weight and the tension uh, trying to pull it up. So we have um, the weight pointing down. 12 newtons and the tension pointing up as a result it's accelerating downward the net force on the y-axis is equal to um, mass times acceleration but acceleration is in minus j hat direction so it is minus 12 point 12 divided by 9.8, the mass times the acceleration, and the net force pointing up is T minus 12. So the T minus 12 is in J hat direction, the acceleration is in minus J hat direction, so I need the minus sign here. So um, 12 divided by 9.8 times acceleration was 9.8 T divided by 20 uh, this is equal to 12 minus T so if I operate the minus sign on both sides so I can see because these uh, 9.8s will cancel here we're going to get a tension of because uh, we have a 1t on this side 12 over 20 on the other side so this will make it 30 t, 32 over 20 32 over 20 uh, t is equal to 12 newtons so we find that the tension must be 7.5 newtons now we can calculate the work done 
uh, on the uh, 20 newton block because there is no work done by uh, the normal force and the weight they're perpendicular to the motion we only have uh, the tension doing the work so tension times uh, delta x tension and delta x are in the same direction so 7.5 newtons multiplied by 0 0.75 meters gives us 5.625 joules reduced to three significant figures this gives us 5.62 joules all right and the work done on the 12 newton block on the other hand is uh, due to the uh, net force acting on it because these forces are all on the same axis with the displacement the net force acting on it in the positive j hat direction is t minus 12 but the displacement is in a minus j hat direction so minus delta x so we obtain uh, 12 minus t which is uh, 4.5 multiplied with 0 0.75 and this gives us um, 3.375 joules which when reduced to three significant figures becomes 3.38 joules all right so that's the answer to part a now let's work on part b uh, now we're going to have friction so let's redraw this free body diagram uh, for the 20 newton block including the friction once again we have 20 newtons the weight pointing down the normal force from the table pointing up the tension acts to the right and then we have friction opposing the motion acting to the left this is the force of friction again this is um, our y-axis this is our x-axis The net force on the y-axis again should be zero because there is no motion and the normal force is 20 newtons. So uh, I note that uh, the static friction is less or equal to mu s times the normal force. So coefficient of static friction is 0 0.5. So this gives me 0 0.5 times 20 which is 10 newtons is the maximum static friction I can have so for static friction um, the maximum tension I can balance is uh, 10 newtons so I would find that the maximum value the, the tension can have would be uh, 10 newtons so uh, the actual weight is 12 newtons the maximum value of tension I can have is 10 newtons this gives me a net 2 newtons pointing down so therefore I see that uh, since the maximum value of the tension I can have uh, when I put it into the into the free body diagram of the 12 newton block is not balancing the 12 newtons um, the system will accelerate downward so the system must accelerate so the nature of the friction is kinetic so the friction must be kinetic all right so i've checked the condition on static friction so with that conclusion 
the kinetic friction force is going to be equal to mu k times the normal force uh, mu k was given as 0 0.325 the normal force is 20 newtons so this gives me 6.5 newtons kinetic friction and the net force on the x-axis then will become the tension minus kinetic friction which is the tension minus 6.5 newtons is equal to mass times acceleration which is 20 divided by g 20 newtons is mg uh, multiplied by acceleration so I find that acceleration is 9.8 T divided by 20 minus 9.8 uh, times 6.5 divided by 20 which is uh, 3.185 this is equal to the acceleration now if I uh, look at the 12 newton block so for the uh, 12 newton block the free body diagram doesn't change the net force on the y-axis is uh, t minus 12 but the acceleration is downward so minus 12 over 9.8 a so uh, this is going to be equal to 12 over 9.8 for acceleration I substitute 9.8 t divided by 20 minus 3.185 and uh, so I have isolated the acceleration so I have also multiplied the two sides with minus 1 so this becomes 12 minus t so uh, if I distribute this here I find that 12 T over 20 minus um, 3.9 is equal to 12 minus T so this is going to give me 32 over 20 T is equal to 15.9 and I can now calculate the tension the new tension is 15.9 times 20 divided by 32 which is 9.94 newtons so let's calculate the work done on the uh, 20 newton block 9.94 newtons is acting to the right the kinetic friction is acting to the left so 9.94 minus 6.5 times 0 0.75 meters I find 2.58 joules and for the 12 Newton block I have the weight pointing down minus the tension 9.94 times the displacement 0.75 this is 1.55 joules okay so to summarize uh, we have the same problem we solved before uh, this time we have friction between the table and the uh, 20 newton block and the system is basically uh, moving down 75 centimeters 12 newtons moving down 20 newton block is moving to the right by 75 centimeters so we want to consider two scenarios no friction and there is friction so in the case of no friction this is the free body diagram of the 20 newton block the tension is the force that is responsible for the acceleration on the x-axis of the 20 newton block of course this acceleration and this acceleration will be the same because they are moving together so the mass of this 20 newton block is 20 divided by 9.8 
because 20 is mg so this multiplied by acceleration is tension so we obtain acceleration in terms of tension in the 12 newton block case because there is no contact between the table and the 12 newton block the only two forces are the weight and tension and the net force acting on the uh, y-axis in plus j hat direction is t minus 12 but the acceleration is in minus j hat direction so minus 12 over 9.8 12 over 9.8 is the mass of this block multiplied by A. So uh, substituting this result from the free body diagram of 20 Newton block to the equation that we obtain, uh, we find the tension to be 7.5 Newtons. And who is going to do work on the 20 Newton block? Only tension is in the direction of displacement. The two other forces are orthogonal to the uh, direction of displacement so we cannot have any work done by these two cosine 90 is zero so work done by tension is t delta x uh, because they're in the same direction cosine zero 7.5 times 0 0.75 so that gives us the answer we're looking for for the 12 newton block we have a net force uh, 12 minus t pointing down so 12 minus t multiplied with delta x pointing down so this gives us 3.38 joules when we have friction the uh, because both kinetic and uh, static friction coefficients are given first i have to check if static friction will work so the maximum value of static friction is mu s times the normal force which is uh, equal to the weight of the block in magnitude. So uh, we find that the maximum friction I can have, static friction is 10 newtons, which means the maximum tension I can have uh, is 10 newtons for static friction to work. And this maximum tension of 10 newtons is less than 12 newtons. So in this free body diagram, I can see that this has to accelerate. Therefore, we cannot have static friction. It has to be kinetic friction. Kinetic friction force is mu k times n, which is 6.5 newtons. So we modify the free body diagram of the 20 newton block. The net force acting to the right is T minus Fk, which is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can write acceleration in terms of tension here. And uh, for the 12 newton block, we substitute the uh, for acceleration this uh, value for tension this expression for uh, acceleration in terms of tension and uh, the same equations basically here nothing has changed now we solve for tension and we find that it is 9.94 newtons now the work done by on the 20 newton block will be tension minus kinetic friction the net force on the x-axis on the x positive x direction multiplied by displacement and work done on the 12 newton block is the weight minus the tension multiplied with displacement.